We are now less than a week away from the NBA draft, and while there are years, the draft is obvious and boring. This is not one of those years. <laughs> yes, there is a lot of talent on the board, but no, there is no Tim Duncan or LeBron James, which means there is still debate over the number one pick and just about everything else. And may I remind you that the Suns are picking first this year and the Kings are picking second. So really, we cannot undersell the chaos possible with those two franchises. Phoenix has never even had a number one pick before in its 50 year history. Now it's had the number two pick a few times, most recently in 87. That's when the Suns chose Armin Gilliam, when Scottie Pippen and Reggie Miller and Horace Grant and Kevin Johnson and Kenny Smith were all still available. Yeah, that doesn't haunt anyone to this day or anything. Of course, you can't hold current GM Ryan McDonough accountable for 1987, and McDonough has made some good choices in recent years. Josh Jackson continues to look promising, and we all know Devin Booker is a stud. But McDonough is also the guy who once picked Alex Len in a year that Giannis, Rudy Gobert, CJ McCollum, and Steven Adams were all still on the board. He's used first round picks on TJ Warren and Dragon Bender. He's expected this year to pick DeAndre Ayton, and that will certainly be a popular choice locally. Ayton played his final two years of high school in Phoenix. He went to Arizona, like, you know, half of the Jumps production staff. Bear down, guys. And oh, by the way, he is seven foot one with elite athleticism and actually fills a need in the Suns' starting lineup. Last month, Ayton called his potential pairing with Booker, quote, Shaq and Kobe 2.0. And boy, wouldn't that be nice for, Sp for Suns fans. But there are questions with Ayton, centering on his defensive effort and whether taking a big man first still works in today's NBA. And there is the matter of Luka Doncic, the 19-year-old prodigy who just led his team to a EuroLeague title, winning MVP honors along the way. I, I, that is ridiculous, guys. EuroLeague isn't the NBA, but it is the next best league out there, and he is 19. Would the Suns live to regret passing on him if they do? Will the Kings definitely take him? I mean, this is the Kings. Literally, <laughs> anything is possible, including them trading the pick away for uh, God knows what. A and once Sacramento does, whatever it does, there are so many other questions. What should teams do about Michael Porter Jr., the elite talent who missed most of his freshman season due to back surgery and is having health flare-ups even again just this week? What about teams looking to make a splash in free agency? The cap is really tight this year, which means teams oh, like, I, I don't know, Houston. Oh, that's good. Yeah, come on, guys. That's very good. Um, Houston good. might want to make room for another big free agent. You'll likely see them made some trades around the draft if they, in fact, think that they can do that. So what about the Cavs? They have the eight pick. If you want LeBron to stay, you need to bring in at least one more established elite player in. That eight pick would likely have to be involved as well. But is Dan Gilbert going to put in play if he doesn't even know if LeBron wants to come back? Really, this whole draft is one big, beautiful mess. There will definitely be teams who live to regret what they do next Thursday night. Sounds like fun to me. So guys, I, I mean, look, we've got the Suns sort of issue being the biggest thing looming out there. DeAndre Ayton has come out and said, I know I'm number one. I know they're going to pick me number one. Phoenix hasn't come out and said that, Byron. But do you think that's the right choice for them? I think so. I think, again, this, this kid, uh, athletic-wise, is, is off the chart. Uh, he, he's not your prototype, you know, point, I mean, uh, post-up player. Yeah. He's also a guy that can get out 15, 17 feet, put the ball on the floor, make shots. So he, he's a guy I think that could fit with them. And, and the way they play defense, you need somebody back there that can kind of defend that realm. Uh, he runs the floor and you, you matching him up with, with, with Devin Booker so you do have a book in at that guard position at that center position that I think bodes well for them in the future. Now I, I know they would love to not be in this position next year but you're in the West. So even if he goes number one, you're not going to see a, a gigantic improvement from the Spur, from the Suns to get to a you know get to a playoff spot in the Western Division because of all the other great teams that we have in the West. But I think it will be a big time improvement, and I think this kid has the potential to be around for a long time. Um, I, you know, I'm not convinced he's decidedly better than Mo Bamba. Mm -hmm. uh, then again, I'm not a college scout. I watch mostly pro and during the season. I, I mean, look. This will be their seventh lottery pick in six years. Yes. Four of those are top five picks. Mm -hmm. You know, two of them number four, and this is a number one. So, I mean, they better get it right. I mean, this incentive structure, silly as it is, is designed to, you know, it's designed to make these teams better. And they need to, they have leveraged their failure to get opportunity. And, I mean, frankly, it, I mean, it's, honestly, if, if they can't nail this one after seven and six, 
Right. They, they should not pick in the first round again for five years. <laughs> it should be like a fine. It would represent a, a, just a colossal failure of management. <laughs> that, that's, that's your lottery like, tweak, is, is basically your tanking tweak, that if teams do tank and they choose poorly, they're not allowed to tank again. Never again. They should be <laughs> banned. I like that, Kevin. Right? I, I think that you should be penalized for picking for seven, six out of seven straight years and you still can't get there. Boston has done that, and they've done pretty they've dang done well. And well. Philly's done that, and they've done, they've done pretty well. So, yeah, I agree. If you, if you can't get it right, you know, if you're if you're you're picking lottery for five straight years and you don't get it right, you lose your your privilege of being in lottery. Seven picks in six. Years. I know, but I'm just saying I'm, I'm putting a, I'm putting he's, he's the ceiling. I'm saying five years. You got five years. And look, Philly has had some duds too, but their whole point, the point of the process, was you get enough high picks, you will hit on enough of them to make a really great team. Phoenix maybe unintentionally is doing the process and, and does have that opportunity. It is interesting though, because in today's NBA, I agree DeAndre Ayton, not your, you know, he's not your old school big man. Right, right. But he's not right. knocking down threes every five seconds right. either. Right? right. And right. and Luka Doncic is just a huge question mark. It could turn out he's not really suited for the NBA game. It could turn out that he's the second coming of whoever. It's tough. I'm really apprehensive about bigs in this day and age who don't have major range as a number one pick. I'm not saying they can't be huge contributors. We see Clint Capella. Mm -hmm. I mean, DeAndre Jordan is still a defensive force, mm -hmm. but I just, I'm, I'm really skittish about that profile of player. Um, that said, he's pretty fantastic. Yeah.